Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Lauren. And this is Block Call Friday. So today we're going to talk about um, what to do if your hen becomes egg bound and some symptoms to look for and things we like to do to help them pass the egg. So, so if you have owned a hen long enough or you have a flock, um, an egg bound hen is something that occurs just about in every flock at some point. Um, what causes it exactly can't be pinpointed, but obviously lack of calcium is a big trigger. Stress is a big trigger. Um, overweight. Uh, overweight. Yep, yep, yep. That's another big one. Age. Age. Um, and uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Calcium. My train of thought. So anyhow, we're going to tell you what to do if you have an egg-bound hen. Um, I've had great success with this. Lauren has had great success with it. Um, so before we get into that, Lauren's going to describe to you sort of the symptoms that she saw in her bird uh, just a couple days ago. Yeah, about two days ago, the chickens were out free-ranging. Um, Lily here was, you know, she was out and about, but she would stop. And then... She, her legs were very bow legged, you know. She was standing very, very still. Like very, she was constipated. Exactly, just like she was constipated. She wasn't puffed up or anything, but her back, feathers back here would go down. And I saw there was a really, really runny stool going down the back of her feathers. It was white. It was just a big mess. So I watched her for about 30 minutes to be sure that's what was wrong with her. Um, she was struggling, pushing. And you'll see their eyes will, will close, and um, you won't see their, their feathers ruffled up. But mm -hmm. if you feel the underneath of their belly, um, it'll have sort of a, it'll feel sort of like a, a baseball roundness, a little bit yeah, hard. Yeah, kind of taunt, like you're pushing, like your abs, you're pushing. Right, so. exactly. Um, oftentimes, the vent will not be prolapsed, but you'll, it'll appear bigger than, than usual. Yeah, you'll see it kind of... Pucker out. Right. Pucker out. <laughs> so there's a couple steps, um, and it's important to follow the steps sort of precisely, um, and we'll explain why. But the first thing you're going to do is bring the hen in, inside or somewhere warm. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren took, what's her name again? Lily. 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 <laughs> Lily. Lauren took Lily, um, put her in the sink with warm water. So you're going to fill a sink up. Um, you know, how far did you put her in? Yeah, about up to her vent or just under her vent. And she lay just like this. There's nothing wrong with her now. She's just a very calm hen. Very She's chill. Just, I don't know. So um, she just willingly laid in this warm water. And, you know, I washed off the poop and I was kind of splashing it on her vent. And the warm water kind of relaxes their muscles. Yeah. And so you want, want them to be relaxed, you know, sort of as she is in the warm water. So while the bird is in the warm water, you're going to take a 300 milligram tablet of calcium, put it in something, you know, we just have a little ramekin here, right. um, and fill it with about a quarter cup of warm water. So it's almost the consistency of milk, and it, and it pretty much does. Yeah, make sure, yeah, make sure it really dissolves in there before you you give it to them. So um, Lauren, actually, how did you give her? Yours? Well, a lot of people, you have to syringe it in to their mouth usually. Um, she just drank it. I had it in a it cup just amazing. like this, and I put it up to her beak, and she just drank it. And I so, would stop, and she would soak. What did and you say she got about 150 milligrams? She got about 150 milligrams of calcium tablet in her. So after about 15 minutes of soaking her, I took her out, I had to blow dry her. Um, the whole spa treatment. The whole spa <laughs> treatment, which she liked, and um, so the reason why you want to give the calcium in the warm water is there, it, it sort of opens everything up. They're warm, they're relaxed, they're absorbing the calcium. Um, and you want to give them about at least 150 milligrams um, over the course of 15, 20 minutes. Is that the same for bantam sized hens too? Um, I would say you could cut it down a little bit for bantams, uh, 125, but it's not going to hurt them to have a little bit more. So if you give them 150, 180, um, it's okay. So while they're in the warm water, you're giving them the calcium. If you can do it the way Lauren did, where she just held the cup up, fantastic. I've never had luck with that, although I don't think I've ever tried it. Uh, but I just will we'll take a syringe and just syringe in 
um, maybe a half a cc at a time every minute or so. Yeah, so you're not just shoving it in. Yeah, there. and it and it is watery. You know, it is, so you have to be careful when you are syringing it in that you don't aspirate them because it is so liquidy. You know, right. it's it's water. So, so once you dry them off, take them out, put them in a really quiet, dark place. Um, it's been suggested that you just put a, a warm towel over them to try and keep them laying down. And generally within an hour or two, sometimes up to 12 hours, they will pass the egg. Mm -hmm. um, and Miss uh, Lily passed her egg. Yeah, I, I don't know, it was pretty late. It was just getting dark because the other hens were going in. So I grabbed her and locked up the coop. We went in. Um, after I blow dried her, I brought the cage upstairs because it was easier for me to not have to come downstairs and check her all night. Um, but I put her on one of my sweaters and I put the arm of the sweater on top of her like this and it just kind of kept her down and she stayed down all night and slept. Um, I woke up throughout the night when I checked on her. Um, and then about six o'clock in the morning, the next day, I carried her down to the kitchen and I set her on the floor and the egg just went bloop and it rolled across the floor and it was soft shell. So why it was soft shell, I don't know. She had So she could be going into her second lay cycle and it is common for you know the larger birds when they're going into their second uh, lay cycle to lay a soft shelled egg. Not common for them to become egg bound, but um, that could have had something to do with it. But luckily the turnout was great. And if they are not treated, uh, a hen can die within 24 hours, you know, 24, 48 hours. And, and it's it's not a good death. So um, obviously we want to do what we can to treat them. And yeah. Lauren's case was a success. Yeah. Well, you have to wash them. You know, you have to catch things early. Know your flock. It's so important. Absolutely. To know their behaviors and yep. how they act, you know, like how calm she is right now might be freaking some of you out, but this is how she is, so it's not freaking me out. Um, and, and like Lauren said, it really is so important to know your flock. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who have tons of birds, and sometimes your, your quality can get lost in your quantity, but keeping a really good eye on your flock, um, that is so true it's too. so important to just know them and see them and watch them, and that way, an odd behavior can be picked up instantly. You're absolutely right. That's She's a good flock. One of my one of my fears this year, you know, I adding more. It's like ten is a good. All right, I have it under control. If I add more, then it's right. And then you're losing. You know, if you're close with your flock, you could lose friendships too. So, and I know that sounds cheesy, but it it's doesn't true. sound cheesy. It's, it's true. true. It's like you know, so, kids. <laughs> they don't want too many of them. <laughs> so. Sorry. Yes, that's, that's true. All right, well, there you have it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yes, and we'll see you on the next Black Call Friday. Bye.